How many times could you say the alphabet in 24 hours? How many blades of grass are there on a football field? How much money is spent on socks every year? If you want to get a job at Google, McKinsey, or many of the world's leading brands, these are the kinds of questions you're going to be asked as part of the interview. These are all examples of Fermi problems. Let's find out how you can answer questions like this all by yourself and how being able to answer these sort of questions will help you to be more successful. Renowned physicist and one of the creators of the atomic bomb, Enrico Fermi, was able to answer complex questions in just moments just by guesstimating. He believed that the ability to guesstimate was an essential skill for all physicists. And nowadays, for anyone who has to deal with even the slightest bit of data, being able to answer a Fermi problem is a huge, huge advantage. And that's why the biggest data and consultancy companies ask these kind of questions as part of their interviews. It can help you to quickly understand if the data you're looking at is correct. It can help you to quickly get an approximate answer without having to spend the time, money and effort to measure something with precision. And then if you do need a more precise answer, it helps you to understand what data and analysis you need to come up with. The answer to any Fermi problem is called a Fermi estimate. And the way you get to a Fermi estimate is by breaking down the problem into steps and using the information you do know combined with estimates for the information you don't. And the reason they work is because the estimations of the individual numbers are often close to correct and overestimates and underestimates cancel each other out. So let's start simple. How many times can you say the alphabet in 24 hours? For this Fermi problem, we only really have to understand one thing. How long does it take to say the alphabet? A, B, C, D. No, let's estimate. So a minute is way too long. Five seconds is far too quick. So let's go with about 20 seconds. So that would mean we could say it three times in a minute. And there are 60 minutes in an hour. So that would mean 180 times per hour. Multiply that by 24. And that means we should roughly be able to say the alphabet 4,320 times in 24 hours. But the majority of problems we come across every day are way more complex than this. So let's go up a level and let's do something a little bit more complicated. How many blades of grass are there on a football or soccer field? So here we need to understand two things, the size of a football field and amount of space a blade of grass takes up. So I know a football field is roughly 100 meters long, more on that later. It's a rectangle, so let's go with 50 meters wide, but then I'm never gonna know how much space a blade of grass takes up, so let's estimate. This is roughly a centimeter squared, and I think there would roughly be about 20 blades of grass that could fit in there. But now that I've worked that out in centimeters, I'm gonna to have to convert my football field estimate to centimeters as well. There are 100 centimeters in a meter, so our football field is 10,000 centimeters by 5,000 centimeters, which works out at 50 million square centimeters, times that by 20 blades of grass per square centimeter, and there you have it, one billion blades of grass on a football field. So I tried to Google this, but I couldn't work out a conclusive answer to see if I was roughly right or roughly wrong. So let me know in the comments what answer you come up with. So businesses are asking themselves these sort of questions all the time. And a lot of the frustration with data, even though it's everywhere, is that it can often take quite a long time to come up with some of these answers. And this is why using Fermi estimates are hugely, hugely powerful. Spending time on money on working out some numbers isn't always needed. A common question that businesses of all sizes are always asking are market sizing questions. So let's see if we can quickly work out how much money is spent on socks every year, or more specifically, the market size of men's socks in the US. Again, it's gonna be a mix of rough numbers of what we think we do know and assumptions of what we don't. So a good place to start is working out how many socks someone gets through, assuming that they're gonna replace every single one. So I'm gonna guess that the average person needs a new pair of socks roughly once a month. So I'm gonna guess 12 pairs a year. Multiply that by the population of the US, which is roughly 320 million. And that gives us an estimate of 3.84 billion pairs of socks that are bought every year. Now the price of socks really varies. You can get multi-pack socks where the price of socks probably average roughly 50 cents a pair. And you can get the really expensive designer socks, which cost probably about $20. So let's estimate about $3 for a pair of socks. Multiply that by 3.84 billion and you have a total market size of 11.5 billion US dollars. If we just want a market for men's socks, let's simply halve it. And we have a market size for men's socks of $5.8 billion. 
Coming up with Fermi estimates really isn't that hard. It just takes a bit of practice and getting into the habit of doing it. One way you can get better at doing this is to remember a list of what entrepreneur Andrew Elliott calls landmark numbers. Landmark numbers are just numbers that are put in some form of context. So knowing that the Eiffel Tower is 300 meters high and knowing that the Statue of Liberty is 100 meters high. Memorizing a few landmark numbers will really help you to come up with better estimates. Here are a few to keep in mind. Population sizes. So the population of India is 1.4 billion. The US is 325 million. The UK is 65 million. Knowing the population of a handful of countries and cities really helps when you're trying to work out things like market sizing. Time and efficiency. So the average novel is 100,000 words long. It takes about five hours to read an average novel. And this helps you to realize things like reading a 10,000 word report that sounds very long should really only take about 30 minutes to read. Distances. The drive from London to Barcelona is 1,500 kilometers. The drive from Delhi to Mumbai is also 1,500 kilometers. San Francisco to New York is about 4,500 kilometers. Some basic knowledge of international distances helps you to work out things like flight times or transportation times. Length. Two meters is roughly the size of a human. Four meters is a ceiling height or car length. 10 meters is a three-story building. 100 meters is a football field or two Olympic swimming pools. And this is useful in case you're ever asked to calculate how many blades of grass there are on a football field. Honestly, it sounds silly, but it's really worth having some landmark numbers memorized. You can start combining them with your Fermi estimates and start impressing everyone. Listen, Fermi estimates are no replacement for data, but they're definitely something that everyone, whether you're a data analyst, data scientist, or simply someone who works in a business environment when you're constantly having to ask answer questions should know how to use. And when you do have data, it's important that you take that same quick thinking and logical approach that Fermi takes when it comes to communicating it, because that's the other part of the data world that we often neglect. On the screen right now, you can see a link to a short video that talks about how you should communicate to CEOs, investors, and business leaders. It contains a few easy tips that you can start using right now. So hit the link on your screen and take your data communication skills to the next level.